Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. My name is Dana, and today my guest is Alex Horn. Hello, Alex. How are you? Yeah, wonderful. Really glad to be here, Dana. I appreciate it. Well, I'm very, very happy for you to be here because we're going to talk about an important topic today. But before we get started, why not? Well, this will probably give it away a little bit, but why don't you tell us a little bit about you and what you do sure. and all that kind of good stuff? Yeah, of course. I, um, my name's Alex. I'm a principal cybersecurity recruiter for a company, Lawrence Harvey. We're a global recruitment agency. I've been working as a recruiter within the cybersecurity space for, for a couple of years now. Um, really, really passionate about cybersecurity and recruitment and, and really excited to talk through some of these uh, topics today. And, and this is a very important one because as we know, the need for cybersecurity is really, really, really growing. And we have to start yeah. with the young kids. And there's so many more cybersecurity majors that are available now versus even just a few years ago. I mean, it's crazy when you go to almost every single school. I don't want to mm -hmm. say every single, but a majority of them now have cybersecurity as a major, which yeah. is very, very good. So, so then you start to see maybe some kids on the beginning end of things, but obviously people more mature in your career. Yeah. And that's in their cybersecurity career. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about the, the job market when it comes to talent and maybe CMMC, maybe not necessarily CMMC, cool. just cyber in general. And I think this is going to be very, very helpful. So yeah. to kick it off, why don't we just talk about like what the overall job market looks like right now for cybersecurity? Yeah, overall, um, it's very volatile at the moment. I think moving into, we're about halfway through Q2 now. I, I think it is. We're about a third of the way through the year, which which is nuts. I think for a lot of our clients, Lawrence Harvey and myself and a lot of agency recruiters are going to work with really a variety of, of different sizes of companies, types of industries, et cetera. We, Q1 was, was certainly a big kind of holding pattern for a lot of like larger internal cybersecurity programs we were working with, you know, larger banks, et cetera. Um, definitely seeing an uptick for those programs here moving into Q2 and the rest of the year. Um, a lot of the growth we're seeing has been in more consulting and like professional services environments. That's where a lot of companies we're working with are hiring. So it's just a bit of a shift and um, overall things are good. I think the challenge right now, and, and there's kind of a cliche in, in the wording around like the cybersecurity skills gap, the talent gap, and you can really break up the cyber job market into, I think about four kind of categories or domains. Obviously you've got your C-suite, CISOs, executives, vice presidents, and then your kind of more senior management director type positions. And then that probably includes middle management a little bit. And then the real skills gap, I think, where we're, we're seeing a lot of needs is in that senior to principal individual contributor kind of SMEs in the space three to seven years experience. And that's really where I think myself and a lot of agency recruiters really help fill in. That's really where a lot of the need is. And then obviously if you're kind of entry to mid-level um, and I would say in that space, it's interesting because I don't necessarily think there's a skills gap. I think there's probably more of a job gap, right? There's a lot more of a, of a talent pool there um, compared to like the amount of jobs. So um Short answer there, there is, there is there's differences across kind of senioritys and, and spaces in the market, but overall we're we're seeing an uptick. So that's interesting. So are you saying that there's more people in that specific little segment than there are jobs? I think so. Yeah, I think there's so <laughs> many more people looking for work that are entry or or even mid level than that I see it like more senior positions and most of the needs for companies we're working with, like I said, is is probably in that three to six, seven years experience, um, individual contributor type kind of SMEs, especially in, in a space like, like CMMC and FedRAMP and the governance risk compliance, risk, risk assessment space is really, is really hot right now as well. Um, and those are kind of the, the levels of experience people are really looking for. Yeah. And I think also as, you know, CMMC starts to kind of, you know, finalize and other requirements start popping yeah. up, then the demand for more of these positions is probably going to just, just follow, I would assume. 100%. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of companies that are being proactive right now, but obviously until CMMC specifically goes live next year, um, there's only a finite amount of talent, right? I think the more people that are looking for a new niche in the space or looking to get into the industry, the kind of general risk assessment and risk and compliance space is, is going to be a really good decision, I think, for people looking to, to, to get a role in the space. So someone that's in this world here and they're looking for a job and they are going to maybe, I guess, talk to you. How is a good way for them to stand out in an interview? 
Yeah, it's a great question. I think the nice thing about being an external recruiter is we're able to reach out to to candidates and ideally we're reaching out about multiple positions, right? So we can approach them from much more of a general perspective, I think, than um, an internal talent acquisition headhunter, for example. And with that, we're really, really able to understand candidates' short and long-term motivation. So the things that stand out to me when I'm working with or qualifying a candidate is one, um, their kind of curiosity and, and passion for for what they do or for the role that I'm assessing them for. Um, I think those kind of soft skills come through more than more than any sort of technical skills. And for the most part as well, I'm not a cybersecurity technical expert and most talent acquisition teams aren't either. So if you're speaking to a TA person, I'd say um, showing that kind of passion and, and motivation and big time as well, ability to work with others, especially in consulting type positions or professional services, you're going to need to be able to work with really senior stakeholders, not just in your own company, but, you know, clients that you're working with, et cetera. And even internal engineering positions, it's extremely important. And all the hiring managers we work with always list this as a major requirement that they're able to work with and collaborate with others. So those are a couple of the main things I look for. There's also something to be said about kind of what to look for on a resume, which is a whole nother conversation. But I think the classic cliche is, you know, uh, a hiring manager or recruiter only looks at a resume for 10 to 15 seconds. I think it's somewhere in that average, which is a really short amount of time, realistically. Obviously, resumes can be a lot more built out than that. So for me, obviously, I'm, I'm looking to be a lot more detailed than that. But the first thing that jumps off to me on a resume is just the format and how it looks. Does it look professional or does it look like you just typed a bunch of words kind of straight down on, on a Word doc? Um, there's a couple other things you shouldn't really do on a resume. You should never really have a, a, a picture of yourself. You don't need to have an address up there. It's never required. Those are a couple little um, things worth mentioning. And then I'd say the number one thing on a resume that recruiters look for, that hiring managers look for is in your job responsibilities or what you've done at a role, it's much more important to list the result of your work rather than just one of your responsibilities. I think, you know, for example, you have a thousand pen testers in, in, in the market, let's say you could look at all of their resumes and in theory, they could all say almost 90% kind of the same thing. But if somebody was able to say, you know, we, we remediated this many threats and it saved the business this much money, that is so much more valuable than just, I perform network pen tests and that's it. Um, so those would be kind of my biggest recommendations for not just an interview, but for resumes as well, which is other side of the same coin. So that's good. So tell a little bit more of the story as opposed to just listing, this is this is what I do, you know, kind of thing. A specific example, 100%. I guess, is a good thing you're saying to, to include. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. Now, one thing that people ask me about, I don't know why, but they do. They ask sure. me about, you know, what certifications that they should they should be getting. And I, I don't know how to answer this question because I know there's a million different certifications that you can get. And so would a company that's looking for someone tell you the specific certifications that they're looking for? And if so, which ones do you see that are kind of like the hot yeah. buttons and you being not a technical person, are you just looking specifically for those certifications on there or, or something else? Are you having a hard time finding new customers? A lot of folks just like you in the IT and cybersecurity space are in the same situation and they have embraced a new opportunity to get new clients. They're doing this by growing their online presence and maximizing the power of LinkedIn. Have you asked? I have a tried and tested method called my cyber social program. I myself have been on LinkedIn and now have over 3.5 million LinkedIn views. And over on YouTube, I have over 750,000 video views. So I can show you exactly how I have done that so that you can promote your organization and become the authority in your industry. And the best part is I've done all of this organically without one paid ad. You don't need to waste your money over on Google with pay-per-click ads. Now's the time to establish yourself. Look around, the competition isn't doing it. This is your time to shine online before they do. So if you're ready to start your online journey and future-proof your business, please, down below, click the link and schedule a time for us to have a 45-minute call where I can review the exact methodology of the Cyber Social Program. You can also click below to see some of my master classes, which will give you quick little snippets of a couple of things you can do right away on LinkedIn that will help with your profile. I hope to see you and hear from you soon. Yeah, it's interesting. Certifications are a really hot, I think, conversation within the industry and, and certainly talent acquisition. It, it, it kind of depends on the domain. I think 
I oftentimes see, especially more junior and mid-level candidates, really go pedal to the metal on getting every single certification they 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 can get and end up having what what a lot of people call like certification soup. And it's just it's hard to kind of read between the lines. I think where certifications are the most useful are with consulting companies that as part of their business development and client strategy, guarantee to clients that these people have these sort of certifications. It's, it's very important and it's really a non-negotiable there. For internal roles, I'd say it's less important, but I mean, the golden standard within cybersecurity is, is CISSP and that's obviously a much more senior certification you get after years in the industry, you need a sponsor, all that kind of jazz, but there's certain um, kind of domain specific ones, a, a really common one for pen testers, for example, is the OSCP and that probably is kind of the golden standard. For a recruiter like myself, if a, well, first of all, it's it's honestly somewhat rare outside of a job description that a hiring manager I'm working with would be really aggressive in saying we really need somebody with this certification, unless, like I said, it's from a certain kind of consultancy. Um, but when I'm looking for candidates, honestly, it's, it's pretty rare when I'm going through an ATS or going through LinkedIn that I would put in certifications as a requirement. I like to keep my filter about as wide as I can and I just feel like certifications cut out some some really good talent. So for me, and I think for other talent acquisition people, it's not it's not an end all be all. Um, and I would just be careful about which ones you're getting. I know that wasn't a direct answer as far as which ones to go for, but um, I would say leverage other people in your network that have those certifications you're maybe interested in that have found some success in the industry and and, and go from there. Well, I think probably the issue is like, let's take the young people. So they graduate, yeah. they have no experience. So they're thinking, well, I should probably get a certification because at least I, yeah. then I'll have something, you know, versus yeah. not having anything. And if I had to guess, I would say some of the people that have been in the industry for a lot longer may not have the certifications, but yeah. may be very qualified. Yeah. So I think it's maybe it's just the thing that the young people think like, I need to do something. So, um, you know, I can at least say I've done something before. I yeah. Know, hundred percent. There's something to be said about that. Obviously it's, it's for people getting into the industry, it's their goal to, to get anything right. Um, and certifications are certainly an avenue to do that. I think the most common skill set that hiring managers are looking for right now for me is cloud experience, cloud security, engineering experience, AWS, Azure, the whole ordeal, whether it's a cloud focused role or not, those kind of skill sets and backgrounds are crucial for companies, large and small. And those certifications are relatively accessible um, are cheaper than most others. And those would be ones that, that I think are worth going for, even though they're not specifically security focused, but that's a skill set that's we're seeing a lot of need in at the moment. Well, and that makes sense, right? Because everything's yeah. going to the cloud now. So that's really yep. good advice for the young people out there that are listening. So that's really good. Yeah. Okay. So now what would you say are some tips that you would recommend for somebody to get their next role in security? Yeah, I, it depends on, on kind of your level. I think, um, it's kind of a cliche and and I've seen like Josh Fulmer on, on a former podcast. He's, he's a good connection of mine. It's all about your network, honestly. Um, LinkedIn is an incredible tool. People are really receptive for the most part on LinkedIn. Um, I would say reach out to as many recruiters as you can, both external recruiters like myself and internal talent acquisition teams. It's their job to get roles filled. And if you are potentially someone that could be a fit for the role, of course, they're going to want to talk to you and reach out to as many hiring managers, security leaders as you can as well. Um, I would be careful about bombarding people in like your initial outreach with, hey, can you look at my resume? Um, I would reach out to people from more of a general perspective, bring some value to them. And, and I'd say they're much more likely to respond. Your network is going to get you a lot farther than just sending out your resume to a hundred to a thousand, you know, job applications, et cetera. And another thing as well is outside of, if you're already in a role, that's great. I think that's really the hardest part is, is getting an initial role in cybersecurity. But if you're not in a role as well, there's so many things you can do outside of a professional day-to-day -day role um, that could really help you stand out. I'd say, you know, start a blog, start a GitHub, show some of your technical skills that you do at your home lab, et cetera. Um, most major cities as well have tons of cybersecurity meetups through OWASP, ISSA, ISC Squared that are hosted once a month. Those are wonderful for networking, not just with other security people that are trying to get into the industry like you, but actual hiring managers and actual you know recruiters as well. So those are the couple of things that come to mind as far as leveraging your network, by far the most important thing. Yeah, that is great advice because I, I think that people need to understand like for LinkedIn, 
you're creating relationships, even if it's just a little tiny, tiny, tiny relationship versus just mailing somebody a resume. So let's think about the whole experience. You know, you're, you're mm -hmm. communicating with somebody, even if on a little, little level on LinkedIn, they see your profile picture, they can see a little bit of history about you, you know, and that's how relationships slowly, slowly start versus just sending 100%. somebody a letter, a paper letter in the mail or an yeah. email with your resume attached to it. It's, it's, it's a completely different experience and don't be afraid to reach out. I agree with you hundred yeah. percent. Don't bombard people because nobody likes that. Right. Yeah. But if you're just sending out, just making a little connection, that kind of thing. And then yeah. going to those meetings that you just mentioned to the, the meetups, that's a great yep. idea too. And then after you go to the meetup, then you can reach out to them on LinkedIn. Hey, I was at that meetup and, you know, just 100%. want to say it was nice meeting you. And again, that's how you start to build a little bit more relationships with this. Cause there are a lot of opportunities. And I, I like to yeah. tell the people, everybody hold on because in a couple of years, it's going to be crazy. Because yeah. cybersecurity, unfortunately, it's going to be ridiculous. So yeah. anyway, but this was yeah. really, really helpful. Is there anything you want to throw out there before we go to Added, added no, I would just say on that last piece, like, don't be afraid, again, to reach out to recruiters or talent acquisition teams, both, you know, corporate recruiters like Josh, who came on the podcast or people like like myself in an external role. I think for people listening, just to give some insight into like what an external role looks like as an external recruiter, it's it's pretty rare that a, a client or a hiring manager we're working with would directly leverage us to recruit for an entry level role. Um, so it's not that when people are reaching out, it's not that I can't help them. It's just mm -hmm. from a commercial standpoint, right. it's unlikely that a hiring manager would need us just because the talent pool is so big, quite simply. But mm -hmm. those kind of relationships are really important to us. And, you know, a year, two years down the line, maybe we'll be more qualified for a senior position we're looking at. Or of course, if you're a hiring manager one day, we'd love to work with you. So um, I would keep that in mind that oftentimes these relationships take months and even years most of the time when we're putting together a short list for candidate for for clients rather they're usually people we've spoken with over six months 12 months at a time it's very rarely somebody i you know just reached out to last week so that's an important tidbit i think good for people to understand about kind of external recruitment but um other than that those are kind of all the main points i had well this was really really good you gave us a lot of really great information and cool. uh I'm sure you're going to be very, very busy. I'm sure you're busy now. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's lots of opportunities and the more that we can connect the people in the, the field with people you know, that need those positions filled, which is exactly what you do. So thank you very 100%. much for that. And thank you for your time. Appreciate yeah. that. Thank you as well. And yeah. Everybody reach out. Really appreciate it, Dana. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you on the next episode. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.